Hi, it's Chris here from Inviting Thoughts and I'm doing something a little different today. I'm going to make one of um, Eileen Hull, well I'm actually going to make two journal covers. Now I'm doing something slightly different in that I have never done this before. So I will video the process and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and that's great. Um, I'm using this map board and this is the same map board. I know it looks different, I'll show you why. Uh, so this is the die I'm doing, it's the pocket notebook. Um, I'll move that out of the way. Now this map board, if you can see it, has a linen look. It has a black core. So it's black on the other side. Okay, so which I think is fantastic. Get rid of all the dust there because it's important not to have dust today. So I've pre scored it. I've scored this light this very hard because it needs to sit that way and not move really. Because if, if um, any of the product I use gets in here, I don't want it to not be able to bend and close. Um, now, this is the same, I've just reversed it. Um, so I've put it the dry cutting machine in the reverse so it bends that way. Um, so we're just doing two different covers today. Okay, so I will move them in so they're better in view. Now, I won't need to finish this one or put a finish on this one because it's already got a coating on it. So I'm hoping that coating will actually work. Um, with this one, because it's just the, the black, I'm going to have to coat that. So I'm just using PVA glue to coat that. Sorry about the shadow. I'm filming in a different area than normal because my other craft area is just such a mess at the moment. I'm tidying up. And let's see. That should just about do. I'm actually using um, art glitter glue and I want to make sure this is properly sealed. And it's just so nothing will get through to react with the board. So I'm going all the way around. Rather have too much than not enough, so I don't mind putting too much on. Because if it's not sealed, it's going to get in and lift the paper. Now I've seen lots of videos on YouTube on this process but never using one of Eileen's dies and um, I've seen the process with uh, Run quite fast, so that's good. The I've seen the process making journal covers um, using this method I've made, but using um, a mold rather than an existing journal co cover as such. So whether this people have tried it and it hasn't worked or nobody's tried it yet and I'm the first one, I have no idea. But I'm interesting to see how this goes and experimentation is all how we, how we all learn. So that's nice and sealed, I'll set that there. So I'm going to be making an epoxy resin cover. Two parts, equal equal, mix and then pour. I'm trying to get a domed effect so I will be aiming to get a dome. This one will be done slightly differently than this one 
because this one I'm going to embed some items in the in the resin itself. Um, this one I'm just going to do black with um, some alcohol ink in the resin itself. Okay, so I'm just going to mask these up. Or not this one so much, I'm going to mask this one up because I want no resin to fall off the edge of this one because I want to later, it's going to be slightly thicker than this one because of the things I'm embedding in it. This one doesn't need to be masked up because it's, um, it, it, it's going to be slightly thinner coat because all I'm doing is putting alcohol ink on top of that. Okay, so it doesn't need to be um, have have an edging around it. It doesn't matter if the resin falls off the edge uh, or flows off the edge. That's not going to bother me on this one. And now it's very important that you protect your work surface, especially if it's your dining room table, <laughs> like this one is at the moment. Um, so I've got a silicon mat. Any resin that drips off and falls onto this is just going to peel up later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this one up and then um, come back again. So this is almost dry, it's still a little bit tacky. This one is all masked up. As you can see, I've masked around the edges of it. Okay, now, when I pull the resin in, this might pull up against here and create a little bit of a lip. I'm not worried about that at this stage because I'm doing a second pouring on this one. Um, and that's because I want a domed finish on this one and a domed finish um, on resin is when you see Okay, you might be able to see it on that button. See how it's got that curved edge that curved smooth edge When you see a piece of resin jewelry, and it's got that curved edge or Anything like that that's called doming when you want that curved edge. I don't know if you can see it on that or not Is it focusing? Not really hey, but yeah um, now these are buttons which are going to be embedded in this resin because I thought that looked nice against this linen look. This one, as I said, is just going to be plain resin with alcohol inks. And I'm trying the alcohol inks I bought are the Couture Creations alcohol inks. And I bought several colours. So I've got purple, it's called Villainous, pink which is called Enchanted, Sorry. green which is called Sublime, and a blue which is called Tranquil. I also have, these are all pearl ones because I do like the pearly, I'm, I just love shine, sorry. Um, this is called Smolder. This is a pearl silver, so they're all pearls, even the metallics. And this is one called Mineral. So I will be, I don't know if I'll try all of them on it. It depends on how I feel when I'm doing it, because this one's a very, when you're doing something like this, it's very wait and see how you feel and do it type thing. Whereas this one is more prepared and laid out. So <coughs> with this one, um, I'm going to um, use glue just to tap the buttons down. We're just going to mix these up. Yep, we're not going to keep the colours. Wow, this is going to be really good. <laughs> Oh, it might be absolutely horrible. Okay, pick a button. Just put some little bit of glue on the end. And I won't care where the holes go.
Normally, I would spend hours lining up holes <laughs> just because they were there. because it's sitting on 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 the thing is ready to go it's gonna pop every now and again so I'm gonna have to reset The good thing about these buttons is they're nice and flat, which I really like. They're not too deep, I meant by that. The, the depth of them is quite narrow, you see, so the resin should coat them, cover them fairly well. do too many. Oops. I think that will do. Okay. Now I did touch this earlier when it was wet. And see that imperfection there that is um, should um, the resin should cover that properly if it shows through as a slight imperfection I'm not that bothered at this point in time okay so let's get to the resin we're going to equal parts <coughs> so All this in the cup. Oops, it's a forty mil mark almost. That was forty exactly. have a little bit of a spillage there so I'll make sure I wipe that up. It's my isopropyl. Okay, part A and part B. Now I'm going to. 
this in. Little Rachel's Amy now. Eighty mil. Now, you can see the striations in the resin, and what you do is you mix this for two to three minutes, at least until all the striations are gone, and you want to wipe the sides as you go. So every now and again you get to wipe those sides and the bottom. You don't want any part not to be mixed. If you get any part that's not mixed, you might have problems with with hardening, sticky surface. If the hardener's not mixed in properly, you'll have a sticky surface. that concerned about air bubbles at this point in time. Okay, so you can see that it's got quite a few air bubbles in it. So you just sit that now for a few minutes and then come back to it and you'll find the air bubbles. As long as there's no striations there, you know that it's usually fully mixed. And as long as you've scraped all the edges quite a few times, several times, and the bottom several times, then you know and there's no striations and you know it's mixed. So there's no striations there in the mix. Just air bubbles, so I'm going to leave that sit for a few minutes and then come back. Things around slightly on the desk. Because this is just a simple pour, I've moved this one over here. Because this one's going to be worked on. I've moved this here. I might actually move it here a bit more. So you can see as it's being worked on. Now, I'm going to start the pour on this one. Now I'm going to pour a little bit over each button. And make sure it's in and around. Might be able to do this in one pour, maybe. Let me wait for that to flow.
And we'll be doing one more coat because the buttons still do just stick up a little bit. Make sure it's in all the corners. As I said, this will probably have a lip. I'm not concerned about the lip at this stage because it's going to help me with the doming of the next stage. Okay, so I'll get my... Watch and get rid of these bubbles. Oh, I can't see any bubbles, or I'm hoping there's no bubbles there. Can't see any there, it's hard to see on that surface, so I'm hoping that one's all good. Okay, now we'll do this one. I'm just starting the middle of this one. So, just using this Sizzix tool to push resin to the edge. See the bubbles pop all over the surface. Oops. Okay. shake these up they do have a sediment in the bottom so, so these are because of the pearl mm. 
No, that's fine. Let's just colour the Maybe I should have sealed that as well. Mixed. Okay, so we just want to do occasional drops. and the green So what the alcohol inks are doing here, it's called blooming, and they, they, when you drop them onto the resin, they push themselves out, and then they interact or move with each other. Now, so far I'm liking, loving the look of them up against the um, the black background. This is silver, which is a lot, the colour's a lot deeper. It's a more solid colour. And which one's this one? colours left. These are metallics as well, so they'll be probably similar to the silver. So they'll be solid. Yeah. Oh, not so much. This one's the, called the smolder. So it's more like the other ones. I like that one. And this one's called Mineral. Oh, it's a nice chocolatey brownie colour. Now I'm going to pop 
pop some on the silver to see what it does to the silver. Oh, that's pretty. So I might drop a couple of bit more, bit more bits of silver around and put some colour in. The silver bits. the smolder and I'm going to do the mineral on this one down here and that one there I do like that colour and I'm going to do a couple of bits of silver here, one here, one here. Oh that's sorry that's smolder. Sorry. Where's the silver? Sorry I want the silver. So I might do that here. Silver there. And one other silver one over here. See how it pushes that other silver away. Let's see how it interacts with that other one. quite nice. I like that. I might leave that as it is now. So it's just a matter of um, waiting for it to dry. Um, so I've got a, looks like I've got a nice domed effect on that one. So that'll be a nice thin cover. Nice thin one. This one's going to be thicker. As I said, I'll do the second layer of that another day. Okay, so I'll let that dry. And then we'll see how it goes um, and so that'll be overnight to dry and I might be able to do the second coat of this one tomorrow um, and we'll see how it goes okay I know there's a lot of glare on this one I can't move it to give you a better picture 